What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy MM2K back again with another video. This is members first or members only. I'm not quite sure. I think this might be members first because I do want to show this to the public. I'm so anxious to show this to the public, but before we do all that and get into all the reasons why for this video, do me a huge favor hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells, notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. And if you are a member, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget our current member goal is 69. <laughs> you don't want to know why it's 69. Um, so let's, you know, let, let, let's get up to that number so we can do the next foamy Friday or suffer stream, um, podcast, which Sean and cold blood claim that they got something that is going to grotesque me and make me want to throw up in my mouth and, and, and curse and vent and frustration all stream long. If you guys want to see that and get your rocks off and, 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 and see some hilarious side splitting gamer rage, then definitely, you know, jump on that goal. All right. So here's what this is, because I've created variations of this response, but I think things happen for a reason. And you guys are going to want to thank X-Men 97 for me doing this <laughs> version. Because I think this version is a lot more sensible and a lot more sound. Uh, I'll, I'll get into all that. So here, here's what's going on. Uh, we created a video several days ago where the topic was being brought up about Xbox possibly getting a port of Helldivers 2. Which, for full transparency, I think the rumor is hogwash. It just doesn't make any sense. It's the antithesis of how Sony does business. But we got Hiroki Totoki as the interim um, CEO of SIE. Anything's possible, man. Anything. I don't know. All right. That makes me nervous. So anyway, rumor is because Hiroki's there that there could be preliminary talks about bringing a Helldivers 2 port to Xbox. So what I did is I created a couple of videos um, and a uh, short expressing why I thought that was a bad idea. A bad idea for Sony and PlayStation, but more importantly, a bad idea for the game. So YouTube did its thing, right? Where instead of reaching, which I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this because I am not soft skinned at all. Like if you listen to our content, our main content, you know that we welcome challengers to lay the smack down <laughs> and the more the merrier, you know what I'm saying? But um, what you YouTube does a horrible job in laying us in front of the people that kind of agree with us. They do a better job in putting us in front of people that don't agree with us, right? I guess to stir controversy, I, I guess they feel like that our content is best catered to people on a completely different spectrum, which is whatever, which is fine because that has led us to today. So we created the video and at first it didn't move anywhere. And then we were looking and I just noticed that there were a whole bunch of people being thrusted in front of the video. And most of the people wanted Hell Divers 2 on Xbox, where we're saying we don't think it's a good idea. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I check the analytics, look at this, you know what I'm saying, see what's going on. And apparently, again, YouTube worked this magic where it, it ensured that anybody that wanted that wants Hell Divers 2 and is looking into Hell Divers 2 coming to Xbox in an enthusiastic way, our video was there for them to, you know, fuel their fuel their fire, right? Which is fine. We've, we've gotten subscribers since this, the, the engagement is crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like fantastic. And, and people don't realize they're sitting there saying, oh, you're getting ratioed. Uh, look, Einstein's, this is YouTube. Whether it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's an engagement. I'm not selling the product. We're, we're, we're creating lifestyle video game content, right? That's what they consider YouTube, a lifestyle channel. We're, we're creating uh, video content. I'm not selling the product. Your thumbs down only increases my engagement. So the more the merrier, right? So I'm watching this 
and I'm talking to Cold Blood, and I'm like, dude, like, look at this. Look at the seething <laughs> anger that's coming because these guys want Hellblade. I mean, Hell, uh, not Hellblade, Helldivers 2 on PlayStation. And I, we're just laughing at this because, I mean, they want, they want Helldivers 2 on Xbox. We're laughing at this because we're like, where were these dudes at? when it was starfield like I, I we guarantee and cold blood got the ways to do it he'll find you uh where were these dudes at when starfield was exclusive console wise right and these and everybody was like well you just got to get an xbox well, where was everybody at then right um and when they were talking about call of duty possibly being uh exclusive yo well you just got to get an xbox like, I guarantee you, I'm willing to bet my right arm that n over 99% of these dudes that are like, exclusives need to die are saying that because Phil Spencer said it and Dustin Legary said it. They're just riding that wave because now Xbox ain't got no exclusive in the games that they got that could have an impact exclusive-wise. They're forced, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to give them to the streets. So we're, we're like laughing at this. And I'm sitting and we're, we're just, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth. And I'm like, you know what, dude? I'm going to, because I got to go to work slash business, you know, in the afternoons and the evenings. And I'm just doing a lot of watching, just make, just watching stuff that's happening on the floor, making sure that our employees are doing what the hell they're supposed to do. So I said, you know, when I go to work this, this evening, I'm going to engage with these mofos. Like I let them run wild. I didn't really engage them for a full day because I was like, yo, yeah, let's, um, Let's go ahead, get these engagements up. Let's, let's let them feel free and welcome. Get these engagements up. Let them hit the thumbs down and let things rolling. But as you could see, they were starting to fester like roaches. They thought, I'll put it like, they thought shit was sweet over here, right? <laughs> they thought they got the wrong idea. They, they do what these typical numbskull viewers do. They try to ride away and then they pull themselves from their grandma's plaid couch and they knock over their jar of Vaseline and they start tippity tapping all over their Doritos encrusted keyboards. And then they start saying, yeah, you know, yeah, now you're getting right shit, right? Like they really think they got a pile on movement here that they can high five each other's sticky Vaseline covered hands, right? After, uh, you know, fighting a good fight for Stellar Blade <laughs> outfits. <laughs> so, I'm like, nah, shit ain't sweet. I'm going to spoil your fun. Now I'm pissing in your core flakes. Here we go, right? So I started engaging them. And then when I started engaging them, unf you know, the I was having so much fun. I guess I was like smacking them back and forth so much. They stopped engaging. They stopped commenting. And because they stopped commenting, YouTube started slipping it out of the algorithm because what YouTube does is it says, look, if people aren't commenting, then all right it, it's it's lost it's, it's lost its luster all right so i was like well damn should i do but, but whatever who cares you know what i'm saying we we create videos every day I'm, I'm i'm not worried about one video i just thought it was highly and extremely interesting to see the response and just see how that this this dweebish pile up was starting to orchestrate itself you know what i'm saying and these bugs was really getting excited like they really thought they were going to get one off because what I do when I create my videos is to, to help push them in the algorithm. You know, I put my elevator music on and I, I sound all professional, and, you know, or, or I try to, right? And they, they thought shit was sweet. They thought he was dealing with one of a doofus just like them and that they could pile on here. So as I'm starting to engage them and backhand the, the, the snot out of them, backhand the snot box out of them, um, they, the comments started to recede, but I got one in particular that really, really like energized me and made me like totally changed my mood. I instantaneously went from, yeah, I'm getting this, I'm going to curb stomp some little dweebs around here and have a blast and get a good chuckle doing so to I went into a totally different mind frame. I was like, damn it. There is hope out here. And I started getting excited. And I said, I got to create a video about this. What am I talking about? And how does X-Men 97 play into this? Well, 
I decided, again, because the comments were slowing down at a huge pace, like we're getting one-off strays here and there, and it's not fun anymore. Like people, I guess people are now reading the thread and they want to come. They're still disliking or, whatever, or liking, like we still get a couple of likes here and there, but they're, they're still mainly disliking, but they're now seem like they're afraid to leave, like they're seething comments like they used to. So I'm disengaged. I'm like, God, oh, this ain't fun anymore. But I'll check every now and again just to see if someone responds, you know, just to see if I can get some fun, squeeze some fun out of it. I was watching X-Men 97. I was like, I, I was told this was a real good episode that had just came up, right, at the time of this recording. And I'm trying to watch it, but I just came back home late from the business. I'm tired. And I fell asleep on the couch and I missed the episode. So I get back up. I'm like, damn, oh, I missed the episode. I said, I'll, I'll just watch it tomorrow. So I go and I um, pull up the uh, my phone and my phone just happened to be on the comments. And I was like, that's weird, but I must've left the window open for when I was at work playing around, checking it out and I never closed it. And somehow it was just the first thing that was open when I unlocked my phone while I was, you know, while, while I took a nap. And I look at my phone and I start scrolling through the comments and I instantaneously, instantaneously come to this one comment from this one user that I did engage with before, right? But I, I, I could tell that I was just doing normal engagement with this person. This person wasn't trying to fight or fight back or whatever. So I, I, it wasn't one of those type of engagements. It was a, you know, straight up conversation, which I, you know, I can do too. I can, I can leave the petty at home and have a straight up conversation. So let me show you what I'm talking about, right? So here, the, the comment reads as follows. It says, um, and it's from this op 10 Nakama. I hope they don't, I don't think they're gonna mind because they, they don't agree with me. So they, there shouldn't be no backlash. They, 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 they agree with the sentiments that are being expressed, but out of all the numbskull comments, this was the only enlightening one for those that disagree. All the other ones were just stupid, pathetic, something that you get out of a Colt Eastwood video just just, just running the mill cookie cutter conveyor belt bull crap right so i'm looking at this and it says uh from that user says arrowhead does everything outside of sony sony just helps publish the game but all the dev time is up to arrowhead also the game wouldn't take any take anything away from playstation 5 since it would only make sense for it to be ported to xbox with crossplay there's no way the devs are going to do two separate story developments for each war effort. And they said being ported to Xbox will only prolong the game's life given that the more players equals more transact microtransactions equals more dev support. Lastly, Helldivers isn't a console mover given it's available on PC, meaning most people wouldn't buy a PlayStation 5 just to play an extraction shooter. Nothing about the game has anything special by being on PlayStation 5. Okay. So, normal written response, even though I totally disagree. I totally disagree, which is fine. You guys and gals know I foster diversity of thought on the channel. We go back and forth all the time and we have fun doing it. First and foremost, um, I don't address everything in my response, but I will right here. Arrowhead does everything outside of Sony. Sony just helped publish the game. That's not true. Sony owns the IP. When you're the IP owner, you control what happens. It's kind of like MLB The Show. Prime example, MLB The Show. The last thing that PlayStation wants to do is develop a game, put it on Xbox, and then have it day and date in Game Pass. That's, that's an embarrassment for me. But so they can maintain the MLB license, which is huge for them, and continue to make money off of it. Xbox went to MLB, struck a deal with them, and now PlayStation, if they want to keep the license, they're forced to make the game multiplayer. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Uh, the game wouldn't take anything from PlayStation 5. It would only make sense that it would be ported port with crossplay. Um, it would take away exclusivity, right? And as we talked about before, and I want to pull this up here 
Uh, let me see. Yeah, here it is. Exclusivity when it comes to PlayStation works differently than what a lot of you all listening to this may understand. I know there's a lot of new gamers and I talk about this with my son who, who thinks like this too. And again, I'm not trying to be facetious. My, my son's a very smart kid. Perfect 4.0 student. Brilliant. We were talking about having him skip a class. You know, he's he's one of those geniuses that is just socially awkward. You know, so I, I I'm used to this, right? <laughs> so some of the like gazes and stuff, the eye gl glosses and stuff that I got to do with him, it, it's just, it just feels elementary because I'm I feel like I'm dealing with a thousand copies of my son, right? So when I talk to my son, I have to explain to him. You got to understand. You got to look at this from five thousand feet. You got to understand how resourcing works. You don't just play. A, you you don't just say, "Hey, I want to develop a game." or you don't just make it rain on the server and things multiply. Servers are not gremlins. You don't feed them after midnight and give them water and then they multiply and then they can do all types of crazy stuff, crazy comical stuff. Like in order to expand this, well no, in order to even support the game as it is, PlayStation 5, uh, PC, in order to support the game as it is, right? Um, you have to, uh have developers that understand the game engine and know how to utilize the resources in order to do what is needed to be done in the game you can't just hire any developer off the street and day one they're fixing the problems with this game that's that's not how this is going to work the ceo said this himself he said it's not about resources Mutton sony is throwing all the money they can at this we have to get trained talent. People have to be trained. Even though they have baseline develop, development experience, they still have to be trained on developing for this. Okay. This uses some type of unique engine that died out and that, but they kept working and building off of. So there's really no support for this engine except for what they know, right? And it is, it's just an extreme set of circumstances on top of the fact that they did not expect this thing to be that as successful as it is. So it's a matter of resources. So when you have resources, when you have a shortage of resources, not just money, but resources, it's going to take time to build that up. So it's not about just porting this over to xbox or anywhere or even nintendo and just get people on it and make it rain on the servers it, it doesn't work like that. but to get back to what plays how playstation pl and, and exclusivity plays a role in this yoshida explained this 10 years ago guys exclusives work in a set type of way for playstation how do they work he says he says this 10 years ago only four out of 10 playstation games make money but sony will always support talent Let's, let's read it. Sony Computer Entertainment has been known to publish quite a few games that haven't exactly been financial breakthroughs. This is, again, this is since 2014. Yet they don't seem to be about to give up on that kind of experience, as well as, 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 as explained by Worldwide Studios President Shuhei Yoshida during his panel at Game Lab in Barcelona a few days ago. He says, when you look at what we do, managing studios and managing funds, that's essentially what we do. Look for talent and support talent because the, at the end of the day, it's the people that create amazing things and it's creative and it's the creative team that makes breakthroughs. Here goes the meat and potatoes. It's a hit driven business. We look at our financial results of the titles and probably three or four out of the 10 make money and maybe only one or two make all the money to cover the cost of the other titles. So we have to be able to maintain that hit ratio at a certain level to be able to continue in this business. So we always try to find out and support and help grow the talent. That's the most important work I believe myself and some of my management team at Worldwide Studios are doing. What is he saying there in layman's terms? Look, at least 60%, 60 to maybe even 80% of our stuff is not going to be the financial woo. You know what I'm saying? In all likelihood to if we're lucky four out of every 10 exclusive games we make 
are going to fund the other six. Right? 40%. 20% to 40% success rate. Now, does that sound like that Sony is taking the same approach as Nintendo? who relies heavily on their exclusive content. That's mostly what they sell, right? That's not what play, it doesn't sound like PlayStation is relying on individual sales of their content, their exclusive content. It sounds like they're trying to use their exclusives as a lure. They're trying to lure you in to their platform because they realize you're looking at their box and you're looking at an Xbox and you're saying look I play Call of Duty I play Fortnite I play this I play that and I can play this on any of these boxes so which box should I get and nine times out of ten 99 times out of a hundred rather the box that has been deemed to have the best exclusives is the one that wins the day what happens is the exclusives entice the hardcore gamer that 5%, most of you that are listening to this, then that 5% sets the tone for the casuals as they start coming over to the new generation. Like the generation will start this first three years is the hardcore that's buying the consoles and whatever is deemed the console of choice by year three and four, the casuals are taking note of that and they're like, okay, people are buying the Xbox when it came to the Xbox 360. People are buying the PlayStation when it came to the PlayStation 4 and so on and so on. That's how this always works. I've been gaming for 35 plus years. Yes, I'm an old fogey. I've been gaming for longer than most of you been on this planet. That's how it's always worked and that's how it will always work when you're dealing with console closed ecosystems. The closed ecosystem that has the best exclusives will win the day. So PlayStation is using it, its exclusives as a lure. Here's what's happened. In 2018, you guys got bamboozled. A lot of you are new to this and a lot of you just started becoming of age in 2018 or you only started paying attention closely to this type of gaming news in 2018. I've been following, look, I've been a staunch gamer for a long time with my Nintendo Power and all types of stuff. And I started covering this stuff closely in like 2005, okay? No, a little bit before that, you know, because I was real big on System Link with the OG Xbox. So I really started covering this stuff real closely in the early 2000s, we'll say that. So about almost, for almost 20 years, I've been covering video games very closely. So I understand how this works. I understand the business now to where at the beginning, just like you guys, I didn't understand how the business worked and why things were done and what works and what doesn't work, okay? So that's how it always works. And that's how PlayStation is using its exclusives. You guys got fooled in 2018 because in 2018, Sony did something unprecedented. They sold so many copies of God of War, so many copies of Spider-Man that they rivaled big ass multi-plat platforms. They were selling tens of millions of those games. And then um, Horizon, the Horizon series, they're up to 23 million from the traditional AAA games outside of what's being sold from Nintendo. The traditional AAA multiplats, that's unheard of. We haven't seen anything like that since what? Since Halo. And Halo hasn't seen that success in a very long time. We didn't see singular Spider-Mans and singular uh, ghosts, uh, God of Wars, excuse me surpassed 10 15 million it's been a very long and sony did it twice in one year and then they have an, an ongoing growing phenomenon with horizon so because you guys saw that there was a this expectation that was said that oh yeah sony's gonna drop multiple first party games a year because they have to and if they don't do that, they're falling off. That was misconception number one. Misconception number two is, oh, Sony, um, you know, yeah, they they thrive, they live off of their first party exclusives. So if they don't sell singularly a lot of first party exclusives, they fail. Oh. 
The guy gave you the formula 10 years ago. Only 40% see success. They're willing to take the risk with the other 60% because they got to keep that hit ratio going. So they got to keep trying. So if you only have a, uh, if you have a 60% failure rate, sales individually are not your thing. Your thing is you're trying to push your console. And that apparently is working. Why? Because the PlayStation 5 is decimating its competitor, the Xbox. Switch is a phenomenon within itself. It's not even operating in the same lane. The two competitors when it comes to consoles or PlayStation, or AAA consoles that is, is Xbox and PlayStation. That's it. Nintendo has its own lane where it operates under its own business model and it's seeing a crap load of success there. But the ones that are going head to head are Xbox and PlayStation. PlayStation is decimating Xbox. As a matter of fact, it's looking worse now with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox than it is last gen around the same time. As a matter of fact, the financials just came out at the retirement of this recording. Xbox has fallen 31% year over year in sales. It's looking bad for their hardware. And then people can say, well, but they're on PC and they're on cloud. They're not closing that gap with those, those platforms. Yeah, don't get me wrong. A lot, of platform, a lot of PC gamers, including myself, who I mainly game on NVIDIA GeForce Now through PC games, and, I, and I'm subscribed to PC Game Pass. Yeah, PC Game Pass is a cool thing. For me, it's cool and great to have in my portfolio. But men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. I gotta pay attention to these numbers instead of these hunches or this, this, this crap that you're fed from these content creators because they're just pilfering you and misfeeding you information. It's right there on your screen. What Sony's motivation is with its exclusive content, whether it's first party, second party, third party, 12th story, it doesn't matter. That's what they're aiming to do. And they know that they could have a 60% failure rate. They even back in, this is 2014. Even back then, let's read the first sentence. Sony Computer Entertainment has been known to publish quite a few games that haven't been financial breakthroughs. Exactly been financial breakthroughs. This has been known since 2014. You newer folks that are into this, you saw 2018 and that clouded your judgment on what to expect or what Sony's trying to do here. Now, I'm not saying they don't want there to be great sales, but they, more than sales, they want a lot of consoles sold. Let me give you another prime example, all right? Um, Spider-Man 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2. Marvel Spider-Man 2 sold, what, 10 million copies in, in a week or something? A, a crazy number. 10 million copies, right? So I know people are like, oh, take, it costs 300 million to, to uh, make in like, what, two weeks or something like that if my numbers are right. They made that money back and some. They made double the money in, in a couple of weeks. And, and, and it's still charting, like I think top 25 or something like that, or it's still charting somewhere. They're still seeing sales from the game. So, and then the new game plus is coming out. So they've been made their money back and they're gonna make more. Individually, Spider-Man 2 sold very well. But guess what? It didn't do its job. Me and Cold Blood talk about this on his channel. Spider-Man 2 didn't do its job. Let me take a swig of my drink. Because even though Spider-Man 2 sold 10 million, way more than any Xbox game. I, I just I just find it hilarious that we're talking about this. Way more than any Xbox game. Right? Well, well Starfield had 13 million people play. That's engagements. That's people that pinged, that a lot of them already had to service. They pinged the game, tried it out, said they didn't like it, left a crappy ass user score. That's why the user score is so low on Xbox and went about their business. That's not the same as a dedicated sale that stays in your pocket. Then from the sales they did get on Steam, there were so many freaking refunds. Like, I, don't even take me there. But even though it sold a whole bunch of games, it didn't do its job. Why didn't it do its job? Because Spider-Man was supposed to be that impressive to where that most of that 10 million was supposed to be new console sold. 
and it didn't sell new consoles. So even though Spider-Man 2 made a whole bunch of money, it did a it brought in a lot of revenue for for PlayStation. It doubled their money and some within a short amount of time. It didn't help push I won't say it didn't push a lot of consoles. It didn't push as many consoles as they wanted because Sony was wanted to be on pace to sell 25 million consoles this year. And now they had to readjust it because they were expecting with Spider-Man, Spider-Man would push it ahead and they overshot their goals because Spider-Man didn't push many new consoles. It's just people that already had PlayStation 5s bought Spider-Man, but it didn't push them. It didn't push as many new consoles in the home as they expected. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that PlayStation didn't sell a lot of consoles. They, I think they're on pace to sell more consoles in one year than they ever have. And if that's, if that's not quite accurate, I, I know for sure it's more consoles in a year than PlayStation 4 has done. So at the very least they've sold you know at, at the very least they're about, they're on pace on selling more consoles in one year than the playstation 4 has ever sold at best is probably more consoles in a year than they've ever sold I, I i could be wrong on the latter part don't quote me but at the very least it's, it's the former okay so they sold a lot of consoles but they had this lofty goal spider-man 2 did not help them reach that goal so because Spider-Man 2 did not help them reach that goal, it didn't do its job. Even though it sold a lot of it sold a lot of copies. Sold 10 million, made them double their money in, in, in a blink of an eye. It still didn't do its job. So you see how we maintain, we, we just follow the numbers here. It ain't about console warring or fanboying. I can easily admit that Spider-Man 2 didn't do its job even though it sold a lot and at the same time recognize that yes, Helldivers 2 is part of a collective makes the PlayStation console even more enticing. People talk about, well, and also in this comment from, from this user, they say hey, it wouldn't take away from PlayStation systems on PC and they felt like that more people would buy it on PC. When you look at the Steam survey database and you look at the amount of rigs that even have the components in them that it can even play this game and play this game enjoyably it's not a lot there are more people gaming on a PC from numbers that we've seen we've seen so far but that doesn't mean that every single PC out there can play this game. And if you have a PC and you don't have a console, okay, Helldivers may have been the game that changed your mind and you would have probably gotten a console. That's very unlikely. I feel like PC gamers who really like a game. And if you're a staunch PC gamer, you're going to wait. Like my son, my son has had money. So he's a staunch PC gamer. He refuses to buy a console. He's had the money to buy PlayStation fives and Xboxes. He refuses. He, he complains and whines about games not coming and everything should be multiplied like how you guys are doing, but he's not buying one. He's gonna, he's saving his money to, to upgrade his PC. He's not wasting it on a console in his opinion. So that's not true. It's a console seller to those. And again, we're only in year four of the beginning of the generation. This is when the casuals start moving. So when you have the casuals that either have an Xbox or still have a PlayStation 4, it would conv it's convincing them to get a PlayStation 5. Because believe you me, most of the people that have a PlayStation 4 are not going to get a PC. Casual gamers are not going to flock to PC like that. For a game like this, if it was fizzle, chisel, tizzle popper, yeah, they, you know, they might have a PC that could run it in, in their house or some type of mobile slash PC game, yeah. But your average casual gamer is not going to go from PlayStation 4 to PC. No, they're going to get, they're going to do what they normally do and just upgrade to the next console. That's who this is for. 
Y'all don't realize there's still like a hundred, there's 120 million people sitting over there at PlayStation 4. There's still a crap load of people sitting over there with PlayStation 4s. They haven't upgraded yet. They don't start upgrading until year three, year four. They don't start that wave doesn't start till then. This is to convince them to upgrade. The catalog is. Not to, not just the game itself. The catalog. Oh, it was uh, that catalog was already looking sweet. I already can't play those games here on the PlayStation 4. Oh, and they got hell divers. Everybody's talking about this. Time for me to upgrade. That's how this works. You're told it works any other way. You're being lied to. All right. So that was their response, which I don't agree with. It's fine. No, I don't agree with them. I just think that they're handling this sensibly as far as their approach. So I responded. I said, sorry, but Sony owns the IP. So they make the decision. We're discussing the erroneous info being gravitated to here. Hey, come check out the discussion. You know, cause I really appreciate the approach. And I have the discussion here, excuse me. So they responded back and they were like, yes, Sony does make the final decision. They, they admit it. They said, yeah, okay. All right. Probably checked it out. Okay. You got it. Okay. They make the final decision. Give it a user contract publishers draft include exclusivity. But in your video, you claim that hell diver brand increases the appeal for PlayStation games. And in my opinion, that does not apply to hell divers because the brand that Sony has cultivated has usually been about delivering a strong story driven experience. Hell divers is more about diversifying into games that Sony does not cater to usually in this, uh, in this, uh, case, right? And he talks about multiplayer and he's getting into final. Fantasy. So you see where he's going at with his argument. And that's where I said, aha. I, I still don't agree with you, but now you're trying to have a sensible discussion. We found a diamond in the rough. I had, I, he inspired, that's, and I was groggy when I was reading it at first and I saw it and it woke me straight up because I was just stumped, you know, getting out of my stupor from trying to watch X-Men 97. And I said, wow. I said, out of all the opposition I've got here, yours is the most sensible. I will highlight it in a future video. Thank God someone not brain dead. I get your point, but the brand reference is around exclusive content and opposed to just story driven content. I've been, uh, I I've experienced this firsthand as I've just, uh, last gen was a big time Xbox enthusiast. Hey, do you have a Twitter account or a Gmail account? Cause I want to show you something. I want to give him a copy of this video, give him an exclusive link to this video. But yeah, I was so impressed by the prism in which he's looking at this from. And I said, Hey, you know, let's talk further and let me show you this video. And here, here it goes. The exchange right here. So, um, Here's my thoughts on what he had to say. It's a great point to make, but it's still off as far as PlayStation now. Yes, PlayStation traditionally has, um, has this thing where they want to do, where they traditionally just focused on story player, story driven content. And that's what their stuff is all about. You've seen the memes, third person over the shoulder, action story driven games. That's, you know, and, and that meme sticks with them when it comes to people that just want to be the contrarians and not buy PlayStation and just go off these memes. I'm here to tell you it's not true. Let me tell you a little story. Um, Back in 2018, when God of War came out, I, I previously I had played Uncharted um, 4, Horizon Zero Dawn. Freaking hated those games. I, I, I beat Uncharted, didn't finish Horizon. I hated Horizon. I didn't think it was a challenge. I just thought it was just, just so, you know, it, it just had all, it was, it was, it was 
something soulless and lifeless to me as far as gameplay was concerned cloaked in this rpg ish type thing which i didn't enjoy and i didn't even have to upgrade my character to level 14. that's how bullcrap i felt that game to be didn't like uncharted 4 at all thought it was over over exaggerated overhyped Having a boss fight that was a QTE fight at the end to me, quick time event fight to me was corny. But so here comes um, God of War 2018. And I just say to myself, here we go again. Same old overly dramatized walking simulator, walking cinematic experience. No great gameplay. This is going to suck. And I pulled a stunt. There's this place locally called Aaron's. It's like Renner Center. I don't know if you guys where you can rent electronics from them. If you don't, if you can't afford to buy electronics outright, you can rent from Renner Center and you pay a fee weekly for like a PlayStation, a TV, whatever. Um, I said so at the time. Play. I didn't have a PlayStation Four. I had one when I played on, but then I sold. I was like, this is trash. These games are trash. You know, I was in my, my, my Xbox, my Xbox soapbox, right? I didn't have a PlayStation 4, but I said, you know what? I'm going to show you guys how worthless the PlayStation 4 is and how worthless God of War is. I'm going to buy God of War or I'm going to rent it from um, Gamefly. I had Gamefly at the time. I'm going to order from Gamefly. Then I'm going to rent a PlayStation 4 from Aaron's and I think it was $20 a week. And for $20 and the price of the rental, I'm gonna beat God of War in five days and, and go about my business and show you how crappy this experience is and why it's not worth buying a PlayStation. For. Don't you know I end up keeping that PlayStation for three months? <laughs> now, when you do the math, yeah, I, I paid a whole lot, I paid way more than retail value for it because that's how rent a center and errands get you. If you can't afford it up front, you're paying these 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 weekly chunks that by the time you actually pay it off, if that's your plan, you pay it off, you're, you're paying an arm and a leg. But that's how they make the money. And I realized I like this game. Right? And then as I'm playing the games, other stuff is happening. I grabbed Last of Us 2. Wasn't a real big fan of Last of Us 1. Grabbed Last of Us 2. And I was like, wow. This is awesome as well. Got a chance to play some Ghost of Tsushima. I said, wow. And I started playing other. Then I actually, and then I played Days Gone. And I was like, hold on. Days Gone is actually not that bad. And then I realized, I said, hold on. All this time I've been hating on PlayStation, justifiably so I feel, still I still think Uncharted and some of those other games were trash. But they've actually turned the lever. I remember when Jim Ryan had said something about he he wanted to be for the hardcore game. It was on the heels of Xbox trying to soften its brand. And gamers like me really feeling annoyed. I think what had happened around that time is that um, there was this controversy this whole sweet baby ink thing kind of started back then y'all just didn't know the name um uh, where uh there were companies that were telling that were guiding xbox and other people you might want to take this out of your content you might want you know what i'm saying and xbox was fought was was head first into it so any smoking references in gears of war was going to be removed and, and it was announced and we were like dang you know xbox why are you trying to get soft like come on man like what are you doing like, don't do that. You need, you know, if anything, we need you to, you know, get in your bag and get more hardcore. So around that time, there was just so many things they were doing. I think had Shannon Loftus, that was part of Xbox at the time, had came out and said, uh, it's not about bullets and headshots when it comes to our so They were really trying to stop in their stand. She was being very, very facetious when she was saying that. So it's around this time. Place, Xbox is getting a lot of grief for its softening and PlayStation just comes out of nowhere. 
I remember they had that Last of Us controversy where some people tried to say, oh, PlayStation loves violence against women or something like that. And they just came out. It was Paris Game Week uh, when they had um, shown some uh, Last of Us 2 footage. And someone and, and Sony just said, we make mature games for mature gamers. And that's it. And they were applauded by the gaming community. So I took note. I was like, hmm. But then what really made me, what really started to win me over along with playing the games is while Xbox was softening in their stand, PlayStation had also had came out around that time with the whole, they're taking the smoking references out and stuff like that and said, you know what? If you are a hardcore gamer and you haven't tried us out, we want to be welcoming to all hardcore gamers. We want to be the platform for the, you know, the gritty hardcore gamer. Come check us out if you haven't checked it. Like, they were, I felt like they were extending an olive branch to me because I was looking at the content that was coming from Xbox at the time and I just didn't feel like I was at home anymore. I just did, just did not feel like the same Xbox. I felt out of place until they, and then they extended their olive branch to me and I started playing their games more. And I, I, I did convert to PC, tried Stadia, you know, enjoyed, enjoyed all those ventures. You know, Stadia ended up dying, but I've always had PlayStation and PlayStation 5 in my catalog. Yeah, so I, I felt like that Xbox, uh, the PlayStation was talking to me. In my disarray with Xbox, I got me a PlayStation 5 day one, even though, you know, me being on Stadia at the time and me being a cloud gamer and people hating on me, like, you know, other cloud gamers, like, why did you get that, that box, that console? We're supposed to be anti-console. And I was like, look, I am, I am pro cloud, not anti console. I'm pro cloud and I'm pro gamer with a capital G. I, I have everything. So those of y'all that did not watch the content and had this belief that I just all of a sudden, just I'm a PlayStation fanboy, and I don't game on anything. That's the farthest thing from the truth. Like I said, actually, even though PlayStation is my favorite console, PlayStation isn't even the place that I play at the most. Like I said, I play most of my games via GeForce Now, um, that's in their PC games. GeForce Now Ultimate, it is awesome. I'm gaming at 4K 120. I'm playing Cyberpunk Overdrive mode at 90 frames per second. Every, all the whistles, bells and whistles turned up. Like it's phenomenal, but that's that's another clip, all right? So, yeah. So that's what happens with, Xbox, with PlayStation. Like PlayStation no longer is just the over the shoulder stuff that even people like me looked at and laughed at. That's not what it is anymore. They have great, unique experiences, experiences where they can draw up hell divers, partnerships where they can get games like Grand Blue Fantasy and Rise of the Ronin, and even Forspoken, which I think was another day's gone. It was just because it wasn't a nine or or an eight. If, if a game is in a high eight and a half when it comes to PlayStation, you know what I'm saying? And if it comes from a first party or if it's something that was like heavily anticipated, they will bang it to high high hell. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, you get games like Stellar Blade that get exceptions because it's a new game from a uh, developer that's never made a console game before. And then it has this sex appeal, I guess, to it that's become a controversy. I don't even want to talk about that. But yeah, you may get some exceptions, but when you have PlayStation exclusives that aren't like the creme de la creme, exclusives like eight and a half and higher they get they get lambasted and and i feel like that day's gone um and i feel like that that forespoke that happened to forespoke there's no way that forespoken is that close to redfall and metacritic that that's a travesty within gaming right i think forespoken is like a high 70s game you know what I mean? If it's if some people, it might be a low eighties game and that's or what higher, but as far as 64, that, that's, that's absurd. That's absurd. That being said, they have a variety of games now for a variety of different gamers. They got hardcore gaming. That's what brought me to Xbox. Um, and Xbox has abandoned that under Phil and they have very poor execution under Phil. So I've gone from being the staunchest PlayStation antagonizer and Xbox supporter to vice versa. <laughs> Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And I'm urging you, just try the challenge. Try the MM2K challenge. If you don't believe me, just go rent a PlayStation. 
go rent a PlayStation, go sign up for Gamefly or something like that, a rental service, and try all these games that you can't play with what you're current what you currently have. Just try them all. And here's what you'll do. You'll say, "Oh, he's right. I should probably have me a PlayStation 5 too." You'll say that. You'll get you'll get over all this arguing and all this hate and all this anger, and you'll see where someone like me just check go look at the content. I started making content on this channel 2017. Go check that content. See the stuff that I was saying out of my mouth about Xbox and PlayStation. And you'll see, oh, this is not some PlayStation fanboy. Check it out. I want to give my deepest appreciations to Op 10th Nakama again for being able to voice their opinion sensibly. I mean, like they say, I can get with the shits. I don't care. I have fun. And matter of fact, there's a little, little evil part of me that has fun doing it. But what I want to do more than that, that's just itching a, you know, a little bad little itch that I have. You know what I'm saying? To me messing with you, you dweebs. But what I'd rather do than doing that, because dweebs are a dime a dozen. What I want to do is find the diamond in the roughs, people that think sensibly, even if we don't agree. Maybe enlighten them. Maybe they can enlighten me. And we have intelligent conversations around what's happening with gaming because we understand the root causes of the do's and don'ts when it comes to gaming. Most of you listening to this that, are, that, that have commented on that have failed. Op 10th passed. This is a passion of mine for the last 35 plus years. Y'all are ruining this thing, man. The, the, the feeble mindset that you guys have or ruining this be better do better be smarter for crying out loud when i was growing up like i'm i'm an, I'm an old dude there was no internet when i was growing up i had to walk my ass to the library <laughs> that was the internet and be there for hours just to find a one result one, one the time that it takes you to find one result that i had to go to the library for and look at for three or four hours and do foot months on you guys can get the answers in in, in like 30 seconds off of google and you're so lazy and so feeble-minded you still come up with the wrong answers that's pathetic to me stop it get better be better please thank you optin there's some hope out here i appreciate it and if you reach out to me brother i'll give you special access to our discord check out our discord is called geeks where again all of us different minded like-minded whatever we just go in there pop spit have a lot of fun talking about games and playing games check us out there all right but that's it that's it from your boy let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below below because like i always say here's what i think if you did like what i have to say check out the links below to follow me they'll lead you to geeks cloud dosage i almost forgot where i'm at <laughs> geeks cloud dosage or knock digital culture in here mm2k gaming but that's it. Peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.